right, guys, you are welcome. Here's the rest of the videos for the spring semester. Uh, so we're gonna start with the lovely special senses. So we're gonna do a sense of smell first. Believe it or not, we need to look at a brain. Um, on the brain, you're gonna be able to see the parts for the um, olfactory system, basically. So this is gonna be, if you guys remember from before, this is gonna be your olfactory bulb here. Remember, after the bulb is the olfactory tract, it goes into the brain. So olfactory bulb, olfactory tract. Just so you see it on multiple brains, because you know, I don't know which one they're gonna use. Uh, again, olfactory bulb, olfactory tract. And one more time, olfactory bulbs on the end, olfactory tracts going backwards. On this model, which there's three of them, but they all look exactly the same, you're gonna be able to see two other parts. You're gonna be able to see the cribriform plate, and also also maybe, well, you won't be able to see olfactory form, you know, but you can see the cribriform plate. So just remember, this is gonna be your nasal cavity here. This bone right here is gonna be your cribriform plate. And if we have a skull, we have, we have right here, Remember if we look inside the skull. All right, so just to repeat myself, remember this, this bone is the cribriform plate, but then the little tiny holes in the cribriform plate are gonna be your olfactory forming, the little holes the olfactory nerves go through. That's it for sense of smell. So this is the only model we have of a tongue. You can look at it from this direction, from this direction, from this direction. We're gonna start this way. So basically on your tongue, you got three different kinds of what we call papillae. Some of them have taste buds in them, some of them do not. Um, so the ones that are kind of like a carpet, these little tiny bumps, that are on the surface of the tongue, they kind of are all over the place. Not the bigger ones, but the ones that are in between, the very, very tiny, tiny bumps, are going to be what we call the filiform papillae. So it's just a little carpet of tiny bumps that are on the surface of the tongue. The medium-sized ones that are a little bit bigger are what we call fungiforms. So fungiforms are going to be there, there, there's a fungiform, there's a fungiform there. And the very last ones are going to be your circumvallates. If you look at the back of the tongue, they form a V, circumvallate, V. So these big, huge monster ones are going to be your circumvallates at the back of the tongue. If we look at it from this direction, the other part of the tongue we can see is basically past your circumvallate uh, papillae. You have this region back here. This is actually your lingual tonsil. It's also the base of the tongue. So the base is what actually attaches the tongue inside of your mouth so your tongue doesn't fall out. Fabulous. Here you get three models that all look the same. You're lucky. So if we start on the outside of the ear, this outer part of the ear here, which is labeled 31 for who knows what reason, this is gonna be called the pinna. You can also call it the oracle. So it's the outer flappy cartilagey part you can actually kind of push around on the outside. Funnels the sound in. What it goes into is this tube right here. This tube is called the external acoustic canal or the auditory canal. So the sound travels down the auditory canal, extra, external acoustic canal, and it bounces off of this little membrane right here. I don't know if you can see this little plastic membrane. I can take this thing right out if I want to. You can see it. See it right here? Mm -hmm. That would be your eardrum. The fancy name for your eardrum is your tympanic membrane. So tympanic membrane is the eardrum. The sound bounces on the tympanic membrane. Sounds good. Uh, on the other side, so once we get past the eardrum, the tympanic membrane, there's another tube. Not the same tube as out here. This one is called a eustachian tube or an auditory tube. So this one actually connects to the inside of your mouth. Um, so when you go down a big hill and your ears pop, it's your little eardrum getting pushed out. You basically push hard or use yawn to open this tube up equalizes the pressure. Note to self. All right, so the sound comes in, bounces around on the tympanic membrane. The first chunk of little bone that it hits, which is gonna be this one right here, is gonna be your little uh, malleus. So your malleus is the first one. And what the malleus does is this one vibrates around and it starts smashing on the next bone in the line, which is gonna be this one right here. This is gonna be the incus. So the malleus, it's the incus, and then the incus presses on this where is it? Over right here. This little guy right here, number 13, which is going to be the stapes. It looks kind of like a little stirrup. It's the stapes. So it just goes malleus, incus, stapes, right in a row. Okay, moving along. The tensor tympani muscle. So do they have tensor tympani muscles on here? I don't think so. It's actually a, looks like a big chunk of muscle. No, that one's not on here, so I don't know why it's on this little list. Okay, moving along. A couple of windows. So underneath our little uh, stapes bone is going to be this little circular region right here. This is actually going to be your oval window. So your oval window is a membrane that's underneath this bone. If you took the bone off, I think it's probably what 27 is pointing to is going to be the oval window there. Um, the other window you can see is going to be this little circular shaped blue one that's labeled number 28. That's going to be the round window. It's round, kind of easy to say. This one's round. This one over here is more of an oval shape. Semicircular canals, these big looping pieces that are sticking up, there's three of them, are gonna be your semicircular canals. It's gonna be for things like uh, sensing gravity, balance, acceleration, that kind of stuff. Moving along, this thing back here that looks kinda like a snail shell, this is gonna be your cochlea. So this is gonna be the cochlea here. 
And other than that, what do you got left? You got where all the different uh, kind of semicircular canals come together. This big region in the middle is going to be the vestibule. So you have semicircular canals, a cochlea, and a vestibule in the center, this big kind of chunk where everything's kind of connected. Uh, we put this back in. I never was good at this. Don't laugh at me. You can actually, you can laugh. It's kind of funny. So this goes like that. There we go. Okay. So. Semicircular canals are sitting here if we leave it in the model. The vestibule would be this region here. This would be your cochlea here. And coming off of your vestibule and your cochlea is your vestibulocochlear nerve. So that should make sense. It comes out, obviously goes to the brain. Uh, everything else that we need to see is going to be on a different model. So that's it for this guy. Um, like I said, the only thing I couldn't find is going to be that tensor tympani muscle, which I don't see on here. This is going to be your inner ear. So if we took this cochlea and we actually zoomed in where you can see, you can see there's a different kinds of tubing here. If we zoomed in on one of these little tubes, this is what it would look like. So this is the inside of a cochlea. So what do we got kicking on the inside of our cochleas? We have a couple of different, what we call ducts and some different kinds of membranes. So the ducts in order. So this one here is gonna be your cochlear duct. So it's labeled number 19. This whole space that I got my hand in is gonna be the cochlear duct. Above it, this large area here that's labeled number two is going to be the tectoral um, duct, so this, or the, sorry, sorry, the vestibular duct. Vestibular duct here, so the vestibular duct here, cochlear duct here, and then the last one down here is going to be the tympanic duct down here. So this, these large spaces, that's what they're called. We zoom in on this little area now. It's a couple of different membranes you guys need to know, and there's a couple of uh, little hair cells. So the hair cells are just gonna be these little guys labeled number nine. They got these little fun kind of pieces of well, hair sticking off of them. So those are gonna be your little tiny hair cells inside here. This big piece of membrane that's sticking up above the hair cells is gonna be the tectoral membrane. So this is gonna be your tectoral membrane labeled number 18. And on the bottom down here, kind of like a basement membrane. This is going to be the basilar membrane, which is labeled number six. It's where the hair cells are attached down at the bottom. So you get your basilar membrane here, your little hair cells here, your tectoral membrane is up here. And that is it for hearing. All right, here we go. So now we're going to do the uh, sense of vision. So we're going to start off with the muscles of the eye. It's really, really easy. This is obviously your face is your eyeball sitting in the socket. So your nose would be right here again. The nose would be right here. Um, so this is going to be the medial side and this could be the lateral side. Uh, superior would be up here and inferior would be up here. So if we would do it just in order, uh, your superior rectus muscle, superior rectus muscle, superior rectus muscle. So the one that's on the top, superior rectus. Sounds good. The one that's on the bottom, not the one that goes sideways, but there's actually one on the bottom of the eye. If we, I don't dare lift that baby up, I think you we can. have to. Underneath here, see right there, there's an inferior rectus eye muscle goes on the bottom, it's not the sideways one, it's this one. So this is your inferior rectus here. Um, I don't know if you can see it at all. You can see at the back, back here, the inferior rectus muscle. So superior rectus, inferior rectus muscles for the eyeball. Lateral medial, same story. This one's actually missing its lateral muscle. It should be going back here like this, but you only see a little bit of a chunk of it here. This one, lateral rectus muscle is gonna be here. And then the medial rectus is gonna be the one that's here. And again, the inside of the eye right here. So those are gonna be your medial rectus muscles. Uh, the obliques are just going to go at a weird angle. So if we look here, you can see where the there's a little tendon that comes over here like this. Well, actually, I don't, I don't know if you call it a tendon, but whatever. Tendon goes this way, and then it goes up and around. That's going to be your so superior oblique here at a weird, funky angle. Over here, you can see, again, it wraps up and around, and it goes back this way. Superior oblique here. The inferior oblique is the one that goes sideways. You can see it going over here, and then it goes straight back that way. This is going to be your inferior um oblique here too. So those are going to be all the muscles of the eyeball. And then if we look at this crappy model, just in case you guys see it, again, it's a face that goes this way because that's supposed to be your eyebrow, I think. Um, so this is going to be um, inferior and this is going to be superior up here. This is supposed to be your little brain. So this is going to be your superior rectus muscle here. Your inferior rectus muscle would be here. The little chunk you can see from a weird side view would be your inferior oblique. And the one that's on the very toppy top would be the superior oblique. So superior oblique, superior rectus, inferior rectus, inferior oblique. Just in case you see this one. All right. Cavities of the eye. Are very, oh yeah. Cavities of the eye are really, really easy too. So now we don't have to worry about the muscles so much. We can just get those out of the way. So we open the eyeball up on the inside, inside. Okay. So basically, if we open our eye up, there's going to be two cavities inside the eye. And you're going to use the lens as a border. If it's in front of the lens, this little tiny space up here between basically the front of your cornea, which this thing is missing a cornea, it should be on the top. 
the cornea all the way back to the lens, anything that's in front of that is going to be the anterior chamber. Anything that's behind the lens, all this space here and all this space in here is going to be the posterior chamber, posterior cavity. On your list, we call it a posterior cavity. So a posterior cavity is huge, anterior cavity is much, much smaller. Um, on this guy, crappy one, again, there should be a cornea, so you should have a cornea out here. So again, use the lens as a border. If it's in front of the lens, it's going to be the anterior cavity. If it's behind, it's going to be the posterior cavity. In your anterior cavity, you have aqueous humor. In your posterior cavity, you have vitreous humor. So it's different kinds of fluid that fill it. The vitreous humor is much more like a jelly, like it's a thick, gooey thing, and you'll see that on the cow eye dissection. Right, and then this big one, since Pam did such a good job putting it together, let's tear it apart. Ah, oh, come off of there. We're gonna open, oh, <laughs> just before we forget, on your superior um, oblique muscle, you have this little blue structure here. It's called the trochlea. So this can be your trochlea that kind of holds the tendon over for the superior oblique. So trochlea is here. This is the only model that has a trochlea. This one has a little tiny, tiny one, but I think probably they'll use this one for the practical. So now if we open the eyeball up again, come off of there. The struggle, the struggle. Okay. So again, using the lens as a border, this is supposed to represent the lens in this model, so this little piece of plastic thing. This is the iris I have on my fingers. The lens is the border. If it's before, but this, we're, we're just gonna rig it all together. If it's before the lens, this little space here is gonna be anterior cavity, aqueous humor. Behind the lens, this big, huge ball is gonna be posterior cavity, vitreous humor. All right, that was good. Moving along, uh, the lacrimal gland. I don't, I think that's just supposed to be fat. This might be your lacrimal gland. I'm not sure if they're calling it a lacrimal gland in this model, but it might be. So just remember when we put the eyeball back together, the lacrimal gland sits on the top lateral side of your eye. So it's a big gland here basically and it has a duct that comes over and drains. Um, on this side it actually drains down into your nose so when you start crying because this class is terrible. Just remember the, the actual gland is way up here. It releases the fluids that can go across your eyeball and then it makes your nose run. So lacrimal gland. All right, optic nerve. So the optic nerve shouldn't be too difficult to find. So at the back of the eye, this big, huge tube that's coming off the back is gonna be your optic nerve. Um, you can open it up and see the inside. Again, it's just optic nerve on the inside. This one, again, same story. If we put the eyeball kind of back together a little bit so it's not so haggard looking. Coming off the back of the eyeball, you're gonna have your optic nerve here. And again, on the crappy model, off the back of the eye, we have the optic nerve coming here. So those are all optic nerves. Uh, the optic chiasm you have to have a brain for. You guys found the optic chiasm before. <laughs> coming off, we got pieces of stuff coming off. Everywhere. All right, so remember, these are going to be your olfactory bulbs, olfactory tracts. That's going to be cranial nerve one. But cranial nerve two would be coming off here, right? So this would be your optic nerve coming off this way that would go to the eye. And this little part where they cross, this little X, remember from Gary, the little snail, that's gonna be your optic chiasm right there. All right, um, what else do we need? We need to see some retinas. So if we open up the eye, we'll open up the big one first because it's easiest to see. God, this thing sucks a bit. Open up the eye. At the back of the eye, if we, if we take out basically the vitreous humor, I guess we're calling that it. This thing that has all the blood vessels in it in the back, well, it doesn't really have lots of blood vessels, but the first layer, the innermost layer of the eye is gonna be called the retina. So the retina is gonna be right here, the first layer that you see. And if we open up this guy, retina. So retina is gonna be this first layer on the inside of the eyeball. Uh, the optic disc is gonna be where your optic nerve starts. So it's gonna be basically your blind spots. So if we put the eyeball back together, and we follow out where the optic nerve comes out. So the optic nerve, remember, is this one. The optic disc is going to be right there at the back of the eyeball. So if we open the eye back up and figure out where that exact spot is, let me just pinch it with my fingers, you can see it right here, this white spot, optic disc. So it's a blind spot. You don't have any um, vision cells there, basically. No rods or cones, so it's a little blind spot you have. So on this guy, it would be this part shown in yellow. So it would just be this little chunk right here, where basically everything comes in and out of the eye, optic disc. Okay, the fovea. Now the fovea is where you're gonna have a big concentration, a whole bunch of cones clustered together. So next to your optic disc, this is optic disc, there's gonna be this yellow spot here. This is gonna be a fovea. This is the part of your eye you use most of the time when you're looking straight at somebody. It's gonna basically gonna have your best color perception. So fovea is gonna be here. And on this little model, we already said that this is the optic disc in yellow. So this little spot over here would be your fovea, this little kind of yellowy dot at the back of the retina right there. 
All right, moving along. So what do we need to see now? Conjunctiva, so conjunctiva is basically the epithelial cells that line your eyelids. I'm not really sure how they would ask you the conjunctiva um, on a practical, maybe this crappy model. So if we use the crappy model, this is gonna be an eyelid here. This squam, it's basically a stratified squamous cell. So it's gonna be the, basically the skin on the insides of your eyelids. If you pop your eyelids on inside out, you can see your conjunctiva here. It also attaches a little bit to the sclera, but I'm not sure how they would label that. So you might wanna ask on that one. Uh, the cornea. So the sclera and the cornea. What's the difference between a sclera and a cornea? If we put the eyeball back together, the eyeball back together, right on the least. So the sclera is gonna be the white of your eyes. So when you look at somebody and that's the whites of their eyes, you're seeing their sclera. So you can see the sclera here, you can see the sclera here. Whereas the cornea is gonna be the clear part. So the clear part that covers the part of your eye that's colored. So if you actually like look at the side of somebody's eyeball, you can see that there's a big clear spot that's gonna be your cornea. So your cornea and your sclera make up the outside of your eye. Sounds good. The pupil. So if we look straight at this fricked up eye, in the middle, I can stick my finger through, this hole is called the pupil. So the, the pupil is literally the hole that the light travels through in order to hit your retina. Again, on this smaller model, the pupil is going to be this hole that I'm sticking my finger in, right, in the center. And in this one, there really isn't, you can't really see a pupil, it's got the lens in the way. But this would be the pupil here where it's going through the lens and going to hit the retina in the back. Again, this would be your retina back here. Um, you can see, not a lot, that's just a really bad model. So we're just going to pretend like it's up there. The lens. So we open the eyeball up. We're light, we've gone through the cornea, we've traveled through the pupil, and now we're gonna hit the next part of the eye, which is on the inside. It's gonna be this little guy right here. This is the lens. So the light's gonna travel through the lens to the back of the eye, and it's gonna bounce off the retina, usually off the fovea. So the lens is this little thing right here. And in this one, if we open the eyeball up, the lens is right here. It's kind of flapping, but it should be right in this little container right there. So the Light's going to travel, again, through the cornea, here, through the pupil, which is the hole. It's going to bounce through the, the lens, get bent, and it's going to hit the retina, specifically, especially at the fovea. Um, the iris. So the iris is the colored part of your guys' eyes. Mine are green, but some people's are blue. In this model, this colored part that's blue is going to be his iris. And this one, the one that's looking pretty crappy, uh, it's kind of brown and broken, that's going to be his iris, too. So the colored part of your eyes is going to be your iris. Uh, the choroid. So the choroid is going to be the next layer out. So not the retina on the inside. So the retina is this pinky stuff with uh, the blood vessels and stuff in it. The next layer out, this purple layer, is going to be your choroid. So the retina is the innermost layer. The next layer out is going to be choroid. So here, oh, I don't really think you can really label the difference because it really isn't one. I guess you'd say that the retina is orange and that the choroid would be the red layer kind of sandwiched in between. Because on the outside you have your sclera. So be, I guess, the red one on that model. Okay. Uh, the ciliary body and suspensatory ligaments. Uh, on this one, the ciliary body is going to be this region right here. So it's going to be basically this whole um, purplish kind of colored thing. It's a big muscle that basically stretches the retina or the lens to change its shape to bend the light so it focuses on the retina. So it would be this purple area here. And then this one, again, the brown area, not the retina. Remember, the retina is the pink. So the brown region here. And these little white lines would be suspensatory ligaments. They're literally little strings that hold on to the lens and hold it in place. They basically connect to the lens, and then they connect the lens to the cor uh, choroid, or sorry, to the ciliary body, which is a muscle. So when this muscle contracts or relaxes, it pulls on the little suspensatory ligaments, which then pull on the lens to change its shape. All right, so the only other things you're going to be able to see are going to be um, on the skull. So there's going to be a couple of foramen, which you guys already know are, are holes, and a couple of fissures, which are big, wide cracks. So the optic foramen, or the optic canal, you had to find way back when we did bones. So as you guys know, the optic foramen or optic canals are right here, and if you stick a pipe cleaner or something through there, you can actually see they open up to the back of the eye. So it's that little hole right there. You can see my little finger when I put my little finger in it right there. That's going to be your optic canal, your optic foramen. It's where your optic nerve leaves the eye and goes to the brain. The lacrimal foramen is going to be in the lacrimal bone. So you guys know this is your lacrimal bone. And right here is where your little tears go down. You make your nose run when you start crying because anatomy sucks. So that's going to be your lacrimal foramen right there and right there. And then the other two you need to see are going to be at the back of the eye. So there's going to be two cracks. There's going to be a big wide crack. Well, we can do it on your side too. It doesn't really matter. Big wide crack here that's on the lower side. This is going to be your inferior orbital fissure. 
this big crack here. And then the back, not the actual hole that's the optic canal or optic foramen, but the one next to it, the bigger hole, is going to be the superior orbital fissure. So superior orbital fissure is here. Optic foramen or optic canal is going to be this little guy here. And then the inferior fissure is going to be this guy down here. You can see my little finger in there. Okay. So inferior orbital fissure, superior orbital fissure, optic foramen, lacrimal foramen. That's it. That's it for vision. All right, here we go. So this is going to be the cow eye. I also have a sheep eye. It's just a little bit smaller, but just so you guys can see the fluids and some parts that are missing, I can't seem to find any cow eyes. All right, so the parts that you see, so the, this cloudy thing that should be nice and clear, this part here, is going to be the cornea. Remember, the cornea is the clear part of your eye that covers the iris and the pupil. So this is going to be the cornea here. And out here, even though it's not white, this browner, darker colored stuff, not the fat, the actual wall of the eyeball is going to be the sclera. So sclera is out here, cornea is here. Remember, they make the outer layer of the eye. So on this one, again, cornea, this is going to be your sclera out here on the outside. All right, uh, on the back of the eye, you can see coming off, you have this nub. This is actually not a nub. This is your optic nerve. It would continue on and go to the brain. You can see a bunch of muscles. This is muscle here. This is going to be muscle here. So this is going to be your extrinsic eye muscles. Remember the ones like the lateral, the medial, the superior, the inferior rectus muscles, all those. I don't know which one's which. doesn't really matter. Just know that these are muscles here. Um, the pupil, remember, if we open the eyeball up, the actual hole, this hole right here where the light is traveling through, remember, it's going to go through the, the thing I'm poking is going to be your cornea. The light's going to travel through this pupil, and it's going to come back here. It's going to hit the back of the eye. So the pupil is the actual hole in the eye, this hole right here. Uh, surrounding the pupil, this, this layer here, which, I mean, you really can't see it through the cornea because it's all cloudy, but normally it would be like a nice dark black color. Um, cows happen to have like dark brown black eyes. So this is going to be your iris um, here, the colored part of the eye. When I open this one up, you'll be able to see it too. Um, let's see what else. Uh, the tape dome. So the tape dome is going to be the reflective blue. Um, basically, I'm pretty sure it's tape dome. I'm going to double check that, but I'm pretty sure it's this reflective blue layer right here, so I can see really well at night. Your retina is going to be this brown, boogery looking thing right here. So this is going to be the retina right here. And then the other things we're going to need to see, the uh, humors are going to be inside this eye I'm going to open up right now. This one already lost its humors. It also already lost its lens. This lens looks like a little hard model. So I'm going to pop this one open. Hopefully the juice doesn't go everywhere. Okay. Right in there. Okay. Let's see what we Slicing through the sclera. I see how the outside of that lovely cornea. On the inside of the eye, open this up a little bit more. A little more. There's some fluid. So, this more gooey, thicker fluid, it's here, this more like a booger, is going to be our vitreous humor. So, the more thick, fluidy goo in a, in a cow, you're going to have a lot more of it, obviously. It's going to look kind of like a big kind of juicy booger looking thing. That's going to be vitreous humor. So if it's thicker, it's vitreous humor. If it's really, really runny like this watery stuff we have here, it's going to be aqueous humor. So in a practical, what I usually do is I'll leave the vitreous humor in the back cavity because that's where you find is the posterior cavity. Whereas the fluid, there's usually like a little bit of, it looks like water sitting here inside of this little um, pupil, uh, the anterior cavity. That's going to be your aqueous humor that's up in there. And the only other part you need to see on the cow eye is going to be the lens. So I'm going to pop the lens out. And the lens in a cow looks just like the lens in a sheep. So it looks like a little marble, and it would be sitting just like that. So remember, if the fluid is underneath the lens in the front part, aqueous humor. Is it the back, vitreous humor? It's thicker, vitreous humor. That's it for a cow eye decision.